God. We don't seem to be able to locate God in the midst of our fight. And we feel cut off or alone. Uh, so we started that series last week, how to survive those moments, how to deal with those times. And I want to finish it up, wrap it up today. And I want to talk to you about uh, the Word of God itself. Uh, the title of today's uh, portion of the series is, It is Written. And I'm going to be coming from the book of Psalms 119. So if you have your Bibles, let's go there. If you need a Bible, raise your hand. We'll get one to you. But once again, we're coming from the book of Psalms 119. Go down to verse number 89. And we're talking about surviving those tough times, rough situations. My back is against the wall. I've been crying. I'm frustrated. I'm upset. Don't seem to be able to locate God in what's going on in my life. I know a lot of times when we first get saved, and when people are witnessing to us about salvation and trying to get us to come to church, they like to tell us about all of the good things of salvation, how good it's going to be serving God, and how you know how uh, God is going to work all things together. And, and they tell us this, this, this. Um, they give us this, this um, presentation of salvation. And they don't tell us any of the struggles and any of the battles, and any of the fights that we have to go through as Christians. So a lot of times when we find ourselves in those situations, we're not ready, we're not prepared, and so they can become overwhelming. They, they can become a little more than what it seems like we're able to handle. And that was the reason why I started this series, to try to get you uh, some, some, some solid footing on how to deal with those days, those times in life when my back is against the wall and I can't seem to see my way clear. So I'm going to follow up today once again. I'm talking about the Word of God and it is written. That's a very powerful statement. That's the way Jesus answered Satan when he was in the midst of his temptations. He said, it is written. That was his way of defeating the enemy was by reminding him of what God had already said in his word. And if you're going to be effective, if you're going to be victorious as a Christian, you're going to have to learn how to use your sword of the spirit in the same way that Christ used the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And he put the devil back in his place by using and utilizing what had already been written in God's word. And when we find ourselves in those storms and those tests and those trials, it is very important that we utilize the word of God because that's what's going to bring us out of what we're going through. That's what's going to give us the victory in the midst of what we're going through. It is understanding the word of God and understanding that what God has written, what God has uh, put in his word, that that word is sound, that word is solid, and that word is so. And that if I stand on that word, that word will come to pass in my life. Whatever situation you're going through today, God has spoken concerning that situation. Whatever it is that you're battling, whatever it is that you're fighting, whatever it is that you're pushing your way through right now today, God has already spoken concerning your situation. And there is an answer about what you're going through. There is a word concerning what you're going through. Now, it is your job as a Christian to take a hold of that word, to take a hold of that sword, and to use that sword against your enemy. To use that word to win and to defeat your enemy. He's not going to respond. When I say he, I'm talking about your enemy. He's not going to respond to your tears. He's not going to feel sorry for you because you're crying. He's not going to feel sorry for you because you're weary. He's not going to feel sorry for you because you've lost a lot. He's not going to feel sorry for you because you feel like you can't make it anymore. He will not feel sorry for you. He will not back off. He will not take it easy. But if you stand in faith and utilize the word of God, the Bible says this in 1 Peter. He says, if you resist the devil, he will flee. But it is up to you to take the word of God and to use the word of God against your enemy and put him on the retreat. If you don't use the word of God, then he's not going to flee. 
He's not going to flee because you're crying. He's not going to flee because you're tired, because you're upset. He's not going to flee because uh, 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 you ask him to flee. He's only going to flee when you take the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit, sword of the spirit, according to the book of Ephesians, and use that against him in the very same way that Jesus used it against him up on the mountain in his time of temptation. When when the devil came against him, Christ continued to declare to the devil, "It is written." In other words, God has already spoken on this matter. I know what the doctors say. I know what the bills say. I know what my body say. I know what the people say. But God has also spoken on this matter. And I have to look at what God says over everything and everybody else and what they got to say and what they think and what they feel. I'm not putting them down. I'm not speaking against them. But I'm going to take the word of God over everybody else's word because God's word is eternal. God's word is settled in heaven and God's word cannot and will not fail. And if I believe God's word, then God's word will change my situation. It is written. I don't care what you're going through. What does the Bible say about what you're going through? And then once you establish what the Bible say, then it is what you say. Do you come in agreement with what the Bible say, or are you opposing what the Bible say? Are you in agreement with what God has determined concerning your marriage, concerning your children, concerning the health of your body, concerning your finances, concerning the peace of your mind? Are you in agreement with the Word of God, or are you going in opposition against the Word of God? If you come in agreement with God's Word, then that Word will work on your behalf. Come on, let's go ahead. Um, Psalms 119. I'm going to read, starting at verse number 89, and I'm talking about the Word of God and the fact that His Word is eternal. Verse number 89 says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou hast established the earth and it abideth. They continue this day according to thine ordinances for all of thy servants. Verse number 89, he says, your word is settled in heaven. Now that's very important because he's speaking of the word of God as in a courtroom scenario. And what he's saying is, is that what God has spoken, what God has written, what God has declared, He's saying that that word is settled. What it means is, is that the questions and the concerns about this issue has already been taken care of. And that God has already declared concerning this situation. And when the Bible talks about his word being settled, it means that there is nothing you can do in opposition to what God has said. It means that there is nothing you can do in opposition or to oppose what God has already established. It's settled. The matter is settled. When the matter or issue is settled, it means that this thing has come to a conclusion. You can stop arguing. You can stop fighting. You can stop trying to present something else or bring something else in. This issue has already been taken this issue has already been heard. It's already been settled. It's already been established. We don't have to argue about this anymore. We don't have to wonder about this anymore. We don't have to debate about this anymore. We can put this to rest. It is settled. The word of God is eternal. It is settled in heaven. When God said by his stripes that you are healed, that issue is settled. We don't have to argue about that. We don't have to fuss and fight about it. We don't have to complain. We don't have to go back we don't have to bicker. We don't have to go through any of these things because the word of God has already been established on this issue and God has spoken concerning this issue. Now when I go to God in prayer, I don't have to ask God how he feels about healing me. I don't have to ask God or wonder uh, whether or not God is listening or wonder whether or not God is going to move on my behalf. I don't have to ask God if it's your will heal me because I already know what his will is and the reason I know his will is because of what he has declared in the word and the word of God says that by his stripes I am healed and God says this issue as far as I am concerned is settled. Amen. We don't have to keep talking about this. We don't have to keep going back. We don't have to argue about this. He says according to God the issue of healing is already settled 
slave. Now you get a whole lot of contrary testimonies, you get a whole lot of contrary advice, you get a whole lot of contrary feelings in your body, but you have to believe what the word of God has said. It is written, I am healed. And if you believe that you are healed, you need to begin to declare it out of your mouth. You gotta speak, you gotta begin to open your mouth, you gotta begin to speak, you gotta begin to say. I'm telling you what you do when your back is against the wall. I'm telling you what you do when the doctor tells you that you got something that you don't want to have. I'm telling you what you do when the enemy is putting pain in your body, putting symptoms in your body, and telling you you got such and such because mama had it, and daddy had it, and auntie had it, and now you think you got it. You need to know what to do in times of battle. I'm trying to get you to understand what you do when you get the notice in the mail, and they say you got three days left. You don't panic at that time. You don't get afraid at that time. You put your feet down, and you stand on the word of God because there is something But you got to make a decision. It ain't going to be an easy decision because you have to learn how to walk by faith. You're going to have to learn how to walk by faith. You're going to have to learn how to walk by what the word of God says and not what you see with your eyes or not what you hear with your ears or not what you feel with your body. You're going to have to learn how to believe what God say and stand on that. And if you can do that, if you're willing to believe God regardless of how it feels, if you believe it to, uh, if you're willing to believe God regardless of what the enemy is whispering in your ear, if you believe God is uh, despite of what it looked like, then God will manifest on your behalf. We're talking about how do I fight this battle? Because I don't understand what I'm going through. I don't see any outcome. I don't see no, uh, 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 I don't see the uh, light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. I need to know how do I stand? How do I raise these children when I keep getting bad reports about my child? Yes. Every time they call me about my child, they tell me something negative. How do I raise this child in the midst of what I'm hearing, in the midst of what I'm saying? How can I raise this child and still produce a wonderful child or a man of God or a woman of God after I'm hearing all of this negativity? It is written. What has God declared concerning your child? What has God declared concerning your body? What has God declared concerning your marriage? What has God declared concerning your ministry? What has God declared concerning your life? The Bible says, with, he says, with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. <clears throat> That's what God has declared. God said, with long life, I will satisfy you. Thank you. God said, I'm going to cause you to live a long life. And you not only are you going to live a long life, but you're going to be satisfied with the life. You're going to be pleased with the life. You're going to be fulfilled with the life that you're going to live. He said, with a long life, I will give you. And I'm going to cause you to be satisfied. He says, I will show them my salvation. That's Psalms 91. I'll show them my salvation. I'm going to show you how I can deliver. I'm going to show you how I can work you. I'm going to show you how I can bring you out. I'm going to show you how I can turn it around. Because I am God and my power is able to do whatever it is that you need done. Amen. Now the Bible says in verse number 90, he says, Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. He says that God is faithful. He said, if you can't trust nobody else, if you can't count on nobody else, if you can't depend on nobody else, he says, God is faithful. Not only is he faithful to you, but he has been faithful in all generations. Amen. He says, if you go back to all of the generations of humanity, one thing you will find in every generation is that God has been faithful to his people. Yes. Mm -hmm. He was the same God of Abraham, the same God of Isaac, the same God of Jacob. He is a covenant God. He's faithful to every generation, to all of those who will love him and depend on him. He is faithful to them. He was faithful to grandma. He was faithful to mama. He is faithful to you. He'll be faithful to your children because he is a faithful God. If he said it in his word, he surely will do it. He is surely bring it back. Amen. It is written. Yes. If I can't trust nobody else, I can trust him. If I can't count on nobody else, I can count on him. If I can't depend on nobody else, I can depend on him. God is faithful. He's been faithful through all generations. You are the first person that he's been walking with. Oh, amen. I know you feel like you're the only one. I know you feel like you're alone, but you ain't the first one that he's been walking. You ain't the first one that he's brought a mighty long way. You ain't the first one that he's taken through marriage. You're not the first one that he helped raise children. You're not the first 
one who got a bad doctor's report. You're not the first one who needed money. You're not the first one who had their back against the wall. But through all generations, God has been faithful. The Bible says, if you want to know how faithful he is, look at, look at what the Bible says here. It says, he established the earth and it abides. He continued to this day, uh, they continue to this day according to his order. He says, if you want to understand, if you want an idea of how faithful God is, if you want to know whether or not you can depend on God, he says, look at the world, look at the earth. He says, God established it many years ago, but yet it abides today. The wind that's blowing today is the same wind that he started blowing way back in the creation of, in, in, in the creation of the book of Genesis. The water that's here on the earth today is the same water that he created way back there on the book of Genesis. The same water of sun that's shining and warming us today is the same sun that he started way back when. If you want to know whether or not God is faithful, you only got to do is look at the elements. Yes, yes. 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 You walk out there to the ocean, that's the same ocean. That's the same water. That's not a different ocean. That's not a new ocean. It's the same ocean. Yes. When you see the water roll up and then roll back out there, the Bible says the reason why the water retreats and goes back into the ocean, he says, because I told it to. He told it, he said, I gave the water permission to come on it so far. And once it got so far, he said, I told the water to go back to which it came. The reason why the waves come yeah. up and go back down, he said, I told it to do it. I'm the same God who spoke it then and is still doing what I told do. Amen. Amen. Still doing. You don't know, have many different presidents, but the wind still blowing. Right. We don't have many different, many different leaders, but the sun is still shining. Amen. Yes. We don't been through a whole lot of stuff, but God is still faithful. Yes, sir. So it does not matter what comes today. It does not matter what we're facing. It does not matter what the enemy is trying to do in our lives. It does not matter what we're trying to overcome. We have to understand that in the midst of going through, it might not look good, but God is at work in my situation, and my God is faithful. Yes, Amen. He He's faithful. I can trust him. I can count on him. I can, I can rest in him. I can be assured that he will never leave me, nor will he ever Amen. forsake me. Amen. Let me give you something else. Whenever you believe in God for something, when your back is against the wall, you're fighting for something, and you believe in God for something, you have to have the word of God as the foundation of what you believe. I'm going to say that again. Faith must be established upon the word. Amen. If what you believe you don't have a scripture for what you believe in, then you don't have faith. If you can't go to the Bible and find a scripture for what you say you're believing, then you don't have faith. If you have faith, then you must have it as a foundation by the word of God. In other words, I have to have a scripture that guarantees me what I'm asking God for. Thank you, Lord. I must have a scripture. So if you say you're believing for this and believing for that, then you should be able to locate a scripture. There should be a scripture in your Bible somewhere, highlighted or underlined or marked by a star, that this is what I'm believing God for. This is what gives me the right to come to God and ask him for this or ask him for that. This is what I, this is the, this is the script. This right here is what gives me the authority to come into the throne room of God and ask him to do whatever it is I'm asking him to do because this verse right here guarantees what I'm asking. Amen. So if you got a faith or if you got faith or you got a request but you don't have a scripture for that backing it up, you ain't got no faith. You got to go back to the beginning. You got to find the word that guarantees what you're asking for. If you're asking for healing then you need to find a scripture that deals with healing. If you're asking for your needs to be met, then you need to find a scripture that deals with your needs being met. If you're praying about your children, then you need to find a scripture that deals with your children. There's a, there's a word in there, there's a scripture in there that deals with everything that we go through in life. Amen. And if you're gonna believe God, then you need, to, you need to search the scripture. You need to find the scripture, and you need to locate that scripture, and that's the scripture that you're standing on that gives you the right to believe God to do what he said he would do. You gotta have a scripture. No scripture, no faith. You ain't got no word, you ain't got no faith. If you can't find a scripture, if you can't 